Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Here it doesn't work. I don't know. It's a different room. I'm working recently here because we can make better the videos here. Who knows what Edgar is recording? Who knows? Now I was making here a scroll. Actually, th th this one, maybe this one, but then also other ones because I had to show some things. And uh, in there, there popped up in my mind that somebody wrote something about well, what makes actually a scroll particularly nice. So, what are you looking at the scroll? when you look at the scroll. Isn't it just the scroll? Yes, you are right, it's just the scroll. The better a scroll is made, the better it's rolling and scrolling and you know, and that is, that's all about. And once you have a nice scroll and you are not such a freak like me with all these tools and everything and you're cutting yourself, you just say it's completely useless work. And I can understand you so very well with these super nice um, 3D scanners and routers and nowadays machines can do everything. If Elon Musk can do it, we can do it even on violins. And you might be right, but there is this small tiny thing that there is a certain small amount of craftsmanship, uh, craftsmen uh, people around the world, and the best of them are here in the Cremona, and I make part of him. And I've never seen a machine-made scroll better than a scroll made by hand. So what is actually the difference between all these here and the ones made in factories and by all the other makers and what are we looking at? And that's a good question because when I was um, making another video and we are talking about different um, models, here are all my templates I made over the past years and it's all about every instrument has a different model. So let's take a Testore for instance compared to a Guarnieri Sainton, okay, and I would say there is definitely a clear difference. Here the pack box is very long and this is small bumpy and then it's a small scroll like this okay while a Stradivari like this one is the perfection it's very graceful very skinny and very round and idle just like if somebody was designing it on a board yeah and this difference here is actually all about. Now the, the difference between the size measured from here to here, from the smallest to the biggest, is varying around 10.5 to 11, 11 centimeters, okay? And I would say five millimeters, give it six, maybe seven millimeters difference, but it's all about these seven millimeters. While the pack box, how these holes are uh, put it, there's actually a very physical, very clear line that most of them are more or less the same, okay? So the side view is already the first thing, the model we call it, okay? The second thing is the size of the head itself. We call them the ears. So how large is your scroll? And the scroll, a violin scroll, is maximum 42 millimeters. And Guarnieri you find very often with 37. And then you find some German instruments, um, manufacturer uh, uh, instruments from Saxon, and uh, they're made in like 35, 34, very small, yeah. But 37, 38 for craftsman Italian violin is already pretty small, but yeah. So we are actually talking about another five millimeters maximum, which we're talking here. 
And then certainly we have the line, this one, the, the line of, of the backside and the forehead and the whole line how it comes, it should appear like it is turning like a piece of paper or a, let's say like a rose. Yeah? And how this the maker is designing it and making it and carving it and these details, if this depth, how it goes down, how this is coming up to the final ending, is another thing we're looking and then we see how, with what kind of tool, if he was cleaning, cutting, uh, if he had a clear idea how the whole turn is, if it's regular, if it's symmetric, if it's uh, tasteful, if it's amplifying the whole thing and if you turn it in every direction that in every direction there is a certain uh, acceleration I would call from the scroll itself then we have also the camphor which is just this edge it's an old tradition craftsman tradition to make a camphor to amplify the whole line and how this is made and with what kind of inclination and taste and certain style and then we have, of course, also, you know, you, you start here from the peg box, you go down and then you raise. Some people want it always raising. Most Germans believe that the scroll has to raise slowly, slowly. While I believe that it's nice that it's raising here, then it goes down and then it comes up again, you know. So when you look from the back side that here it's a little bit a little bit blown up and then it goes back and then it, ah, yeah how these two lines the front of the forehead and the second turn how they match to each other is another sign of let's say taste yeah you could you could laugh about it and say come on you know uh, you put a shirt and a tie and that's your taste it's not so easy and then it's always depending what kind of tie are you putting you know to what kind of shirt and what kind of socks and the same thing here and on the scroll all these kind of small tiny distance um, uh, details plus how the end here of the eye how this carving is matching the eye which is just flat and how you finish it, you can tell if it's a German eye or an Italian eye. Yeah? And then suddenly we have this just very physical, technical pack box which should just which has a, a reason to be how it is, how the maker managed it to do, how he was finishing the pack box underneath, up here, and all these tiny details make it that we understand if the maker is working in Cremona, if he learned in Cremona, or if he is from a German school, um, like in my case, I'm from Austria, some nasty people are leaving some fancy uh, comments below. Oh, nice German violin. But I think that I, I captured very well the Italian taste because of being from outside, I had a little bit more this, I, I understood or I could appreciate it more because it was not in conscious, but I, I, I perceived it consciously every day when I was learning this trade so I just have to laugh about these comments and it's also interesting to see how people face with it and I'm, I'm not, I, I will never be Italian and I don't even want an Italian citizenship I'm from Austria and I'm proud to be Austrian yeah but I'm, I love Italy, I love the Italian taste, I love, the, love the, the way how they face problems and in a scroll you can see how people are facing certain problems and how they put it into a nice 
unit in a nice object, nice to look at. And in a violin scroll, there is much more inside and behind that the maker who made that scroll in that very moment is able to make. Because most of what you see has been created over the past years. And if he's making for five years, for 20 years, for 50 years violins, okay? You can tell, you can see your, um, your interest and your focus is constantly moving, okay? So a maker who is working already for 50 years maybe is not anymore that uh, launched to create something super perfect and precise. He searches for something different and is realizing to make out of something which others would just abandon, he's able to make a masterpiece. And that's why a guanieri is not a lousy made instrument because when you look at the guanieri scroll or an entire guanieri violin, you can tell that this was a big master, a great master. And that's why he makes part of the the great masters and not because he's a drunken I don't know what no no you can tell that Guarnieri was a master and he knew exactly what he was doing he just moved his focus to something different okay while Stradivari was a very precise man had very clear rules but he also had 15 people to uh, organize the work for 15 people it was a big workshop at that time you know we here in Cremona, we have only small workshops. There's not a single workshop as big as the one from Antonio Stradivari so many years ago, okay? And probably Stradivari himself, he took every scroll and adjusted it. And you can tell that he was putting everything his style, okay? And that's exactly what we look at when we look at the scroll. And furthermore, last, but actually should have been the first thing, in the scroll of an instrument, violin, viola, cello, double bass, you have all the tools you need to use in order to make it. And it shows you your ability, your taste, your style, what, you, what is your main interest, your focus in a scroll. You, it is for us, for us violin makers, it is just looking into the face of the other one. That's it, that's it. Hope you learned something even today. Tell your friends, sign up. Some more stuff coming, bye bye.